If somebody can either find or draw a fan art of Dana in some like sick shades, like some badass looking sunglasses, I will give you a shout out. Shout out to Toolbox FTT for finding these drawings of Dana, which were made for the Valhalla popularity poll. A link to his Twitter is in the description. All right, on to the video. So, does anyone remember this game? This game was like probably one of the biggest things to happen in 2017. Like this game right here and these four faces became like the biggest things on the internet for a while. And now I'm here to revisit them. But I'm especially here for Sayori. So let's just get right to it. I'm probably going to be just blowing through most of the dialogue since I've played this game before and nothing really surprises me anymore. But I will say that back when I played this game, and you can view my highlights video, that highlights video actually has to be like one of my favorite videos on the channel. That's why it's, um, that's why it's still up there. Uh, even though a lot of my other videos before I made a new start were archived. But, um, you know, I like... <laughs> this game, this game fucked me up really bad. I'll say that much. Ah, uh, yes, we're meeting the, um, we're meeting the other three girls for the first time. I, I, I... When I started out on this game, I had absolutely no idea what Monica had up her sleeves. Like, that's how clueless I was about what I was getting myself into, despite the warnings in the beginning. And, uh, for a brief moment, Yuri was my favorite, because I have a soft spot in my heart for shy girls. Oh, right! Monica found a piece of scrap paper, and <laughs> Natsuki was working on a poem. And Natsuki was just like, DON'T SAY IT OUT LOUD! I'm gonna- I'm gonna- I'm gonna bring back the silly voices for this game. Alright, it's poem time, and I'm actually gonna try and make an effort to, uh, appeal to Sayori here. I remember, like, when I was writing these poems, I just chose the words that appealed the most to me, and not to any of the- any of the, um, any of the other characters here. <laughs> I just picked the words that I found the most interesting. Even though the prompt told me to write a poem that would, uh, that would appeal to the girl that I liked the most. Which, at this stage in the game, was Yuri, uh, probably. And we are back in the classroom for day two. Ah, uh, yes, Sayori and Monica are talking about the, the festival. You know, as much as this game, like, has the sort of subversive horror elements and stuff like that with, um, with Sayori's death and stuff like that, I honestly wish I could see how the festival happened. Uh, I mean, without, you know, the whole Sayori dying and a- aw, that's a cute face. Um, hey, we're fixing Sayori's blazer now. This is where she talks about how her boobs got bigger again. Anyway, um... Yeah, I really wish I could see how the festival would go, um, you know, without the whole Sayori dying or anything, just because I think it would be fun. And, you know, over the, over the course of the first act, I did grow fairly attached to these characters. Oh, what? That was a really short poem. I don't ever remember any of Yuri's poems being that short. And, of course, Monica! Of course, Monica! You know, it's not easy talking about preparing for events like fucking Hiroshima 2, am I right, mate? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, like, that's the kind of voice that I gave to Monica, and I have absolutely no fucking clue why. <laughs> I literally just came up with the most random accent that I could. And I was just like, Hey! Snake! You wanna help prepare for the festival or something? 
Ah, uh, yes, uh, Natsuki and Yuri's little argument. And the game is starting to lag. Why? Probably because of the movement. And I'm gonna click Help Me Sayori. Because... Of course. Because of course. Well... Oh, and the voice, and the voice I gave for, and the voice I gave to Natsuki as well, is like, um, I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah, Monica was supposed to be, I think Monica, I think my Monica was supposed to be a mix between, like, Scottish and Australian. Damn it, I was on a roll. Fuck. Marriage? Of course marriage is a Sayori word. I'd marry Sayori if I could. Maybe when 2029 rolls around. Fuck. Wait, that's a Yuri word? Huh. I never would have guessed. Day number two. Here we go. Oh, this is the this is the thing where Sayori tries to get me to um, go with her to the vending machine to eat something. Oh, and there's where the cookie uh, there's where the cookie hits Sayori in the face. I actually legitimately got a tiny bit startled by that because I was still kind of on edge. I was still kind of on edge, expecting something to go horribly wrong, and the moment the screen flashed from s the cookie in Sayori's face, I was just like, what the fuck? But it was really nothing, that as we, uh, as we find out just going through the scene later on. And now we're going to Say- we're going to- we're going to Sayori, yes. We are going to Sayori. Sayori is already here with us. We are going with Sayori to get the supplies for the festival. And that's where Sayori smacks her head on the shelf. Poor thing. Aw, oh no! That face. Um, yeah, that also scared me a little bit, because I was still quite on edge. And of course Sayori tries to drink the apple juice first before pressing it against her, putting it against her forehead. This is such a cute scene. I'm sorry I'm skipping through it, um, I just want to get through this game as uh, quickly as I can because I'm just commentating on, um, like I said earlier, I'm just commentating on what I've been through and my experiences, my first experience playing this game. Monica, it is hard to see you in the same light I did when I was first going through Act 1, after everything you fucked with in the game. You know, back when I was, like, obsessed, back when I was fucking obsessed with this game, I wanted to make, for for April Fools, I wanted to make a grindcore song, where it would literally just be me screaming, FUCKING MONICA! And then the song would end right there. But, as I sort of grew away from this game and became more obsessed with Girls Frontline, I, uh, eventually forgot that idea, but now I'm remembering it. Oh yes, and the poem with the spiders! I'll be honest, if I met somebody who liked spiders, I don't know if I would necessarily judge them, but I would... I would have half a heart to admit to them that I am slightly creeped out by spiders, and they probably shouldn't, like, bring any spiders around me if they want to stay friends. I don't know. Aw, oh, poor Yuri, man. She doesn't she doesn't want to have like all these people and stuff like that. But we're putting we're putting her through it anyway. I feel like we kind of coerced her into participating in the festival. Yeah, Yuri is still Yuri is still my second favorite, I think. In order of favorite to least favorite, I'd have to say it's like Sayori, Yuri, and then Natsuki and Monica? I don't know. Natsuki and Monica are kind of tied for my least favorite, because nothing about- nothing in particular about Natsuki really appealed to me like Sayori and Yuri did. But there's also Monica who 
completely fucked the game up. And I mean, you could argue that you could argue that um, what you call it. You could argue that the whole point of the game was to get fucked up. And you can talk about how you know Monica was the most interesting character and stuff like that. But at the same time, if for somebody who was going into the game blind like I was, okay, um, this poem doesn't really matter, so I'm just gonna blow through it like that. If if a player is going through the game with like no idea what's gonna happen like that, Monica. You cannot just fuck the player completely up like that. You could try being a little bit more direct with them, but outright tampering with the game, bugging it out and fucking and fucking the game up is like Monica, are you listening to me? That's not the right thing to do if you want to get my attention. You're gonna make most players hate you by the end of it for fucking their experience of the game up. Oh yes, this is where Sayori says she's gonna go home early or something like that. Sayori, no! Uh, well, we all know where this is going. Unfortunately, we do, Gary. And it's gonna hurt. Monica... You... ...are the spawn of Satan. No, I don't really hate Monica that much. I think... I think her little song at the end was... ...was kind of cute. <laughs> it was a cute gesture. But... ...still. That doesn't for... That doesn't forgive? Is that even the correct grammar? That doesn't forgive everything else she did to fuck up the game and its characters. Alright, so here's the point where I'm going to be spending some time with Yuri. Um, I think what she did was she put a scented thing that smelled of fucking uh, Jasmine. And Jasmine is an aphrodisiac. And I believe it also encourages lactation. So that just makes me wonder, like... Yuri... <laughs> that just makes me wonder, like, Yuri, what do you do in your spare time? Aww. And we're talking with Sayori again. Uh -huh. I think I think the reason why Sayori is my favorite is just because I feel so bad to her for her and I can I can relate to her on I can relate to how she feels on a personal level you know it's a long story and I won't go into detail about it but let's just say like little did I know after playing this game I would go through a very similar experience to what Sayori did and uh, I just, I just want to be there for her, you know? Alright, Yuri is here, at my place. And this is where we do the crafts. And she gets out her scented thing, and her knives. And all of her other weird shit. Oh, and this is where I almost kissed Yuri, I think. But... Oh, don't cry, Sayori! Oh my god. This this face always makes me sad. It always like rips my heart in two. Oh. I wish I could I really wish I could personally give Sayori a hug. She she really needs it. She needs all the hugs. I think she also could have afforded to uh, stay the night at my place. Ah uh, yes, this is where we talk to Monica and we get the suspicion that something is up through Sayori's poem. I'll be honest, when I first saw this, I thought it wasn't going to be too late. I didn't think it would be too late, but it was. 
can I just say, I, I kinda, I kinda saw what was coming here, and I thought it was just gonna be a really, like, saddening moment, but guess what? I was speechless through this entire fucking thing. I was terrified out of my wits. I actually took my headphones off because the music was so fucking unsettling. And then, of course, I was so confused when this came up. And then this happened. So this is Sayori now. Because Monica fucking deleted her. And the new game button is all fucked. So at this point, all hell has broken loose. And we're just gonna start the new game here. And this is where we know that... Like, like, okay. This is, this is how I put it in my playthrough. I said, I said, um, probably to Monica, I didn't address anyone in specific, but I said, if you delete shit, stuff goes wrong. If you delete shit, stuff goes wrong. And I stand by that. Sayori's character file got deleted, and it fucked up the game. If you delete shit, stuff goes wrong. You have unlocked a special poem, would you like to read it? Ah uh, yes, these special poems come at random. Um, I don't recognize that one. I'm just gonna blow through this poem because, at this point, nothing really matters. Sayori freaks the fuck out, gets deleted right on the spot, and Monica resets the whole game and puts herself back in. That's not what I remember happening. Oh yes, here's the part where the background very slowly zoomed in. That, that freaked me the hell out. No, you can also delete... What the fuck was that noise? I didn't even see anything. Okay, um... Oh, and Yuri ran off. Of course Yuri ran off. <clears throat> also, if you saw my original playthrough, it was full of coughing. I hadn't used my voice like I did in that playthrough in a while, and there was lots and lots of coughing to go around. And also, um, and also drinking, drinking some electrolyte drink. I think at this point, at, I think at this point there was a pretty huge gap between when stuff went wrong. I mean, say for Yuri acting a little bit weird. So I think I was starting to relax a bit, and that was the wrong move, because stuff continues to get fucked up in the game, but I think for now, at this point in the game, I was starting to relax a bit, because we were just, you know, sharing poems like a normal literature club. Oh yes, this is the, um, this is the part where Natsuki and Yuri's argument goes a little wrong. I was- when- when this happens, watch, it's gonna happen any second now. Um, there it goes. I think it- I think it took a little bit of a delay because, um, I was skipping through the dialogue. This! This was the first part of the game that, like, really fucked me up. When... The music just gradually, continually started speeding up. This, like, band pass thing came up. And the screen would continually zoom in when I would click stuff. I remember this was the first part in the game that really fucked me up. It just caused my anxiety levels to, like, shoot clear through the roof and into space. And then, of course, when that happened, I was just like... I, I literally needed a break. After Monica, like bugged Yuri out and made it skip to the poem minigame, I literally needed a break. I had to take off my headphones, get up, I think I used the bathroom, got a drink, and then I was able to sit down and continue playing this game. Oh yes, and this is the scene where Yuri um, locks us in the closet and is all fucking, and is all fucking creepy.
At this point, I knew there was no turning back. Everything was fucked. Yet, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to continue playing this game to the end. Oh no, wait, maybe this isn't where Yuri locks us in the closet. Oh right, this is where we find Yuri, um... This is where we find Yuri, uh... Cutting herself, and the game rewinds. Next time, don't take too long to go get the water, okay, Yuri? And make sure you're feeling alright. Oh yes, and this is where we give Yuri the chocolate, and she starts to freak the fuck out. And this is where she locks us in the closet. This is another scene that fucked me up really bad. I was... Had my face, like, up to the screen like this. Trying to make out the form of Yuri behind the darkness. And I was, like, leaning back. I was, yes, I was leaning forward to look at the screen and leaning back at the same time. And I was doing, like, the sign of the cross because I literally thought... I had just encountered the spawn of Satan. You you can hear it, you can see it in my original um, playthrough. I literally said, Be gone, you spawn of Satan. Ah uh, yes, this is where Monica calls for help, and I completely ignore her. Because I'm too fucked up on this game to respond. Oh yes, that was the um, stare at the dot to reveal a special message poem. I remember, um, it skipped through it because I'm on auto mode, but that dot turns into a special message that says, I love you. And my immediate first thought was, was that from Sayori? <laughs> I, I literally said, I hope that was from Sayori. I love you too, Sayori, come back! None of this would have- I- I think none of this would have happened if I had just let Sayori stay the night at my place. Ah yes, and Yuri's eye starts bleeding here. Because it explodes. That also fucked me up. There are a lot of moments in this game that fucked me up. You know, casually, Yuri's eye explodes! No biggie! Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, you can! You can see Monica's uh, chibi jump in the lower right corner. I didn't know what that was at first, but later on, after... I think as I was editing the episode, I realized, like, oh shit, that's Monica's, like, little sticker in the notebook. And, of course, Yuri takes too long to go get the fucking water again. Oh, and this part. This part is yet another one that fucked me up. Literally the only words I had after that happened was, what the fuck is that? And then this is where Monica starts fading into view, and once again, my anxiety levels shoot through the fucking roof here. Please help me. Oh god, that face. Oh god, yeah, this was another moment that made my anxiety levels shoot through the roof. Just Monica. Just Monica. Click OK to OK. And the game restarts. Just Monica. I was confused as all fuck at this point. I had no idea what was going on with the game. I had no idea what was going on with me. I don't even think I knew what was real anymore at this point. I think this is the point where I was starting to question my existence and I said, my mind has been open to things that no human being. And then I couldn't finish my sentence. Fuck Monica? Throw back to that one time I fucked Monica in a dream. Oh yes, and what I didn't realize the first time was that if you try and move the cursor to select Natsuki or Yuri, the game pushes the cursor back down towards Monica's decision. But if I can just push hard enough, I can click on Yuri's dialogue option and it fucks the game up even more. But I didn't realize that the first time I played through. I immediately just went for Monica because I think I subconsciously knew at this point that she was in control of the game. But, I was just like, I was just like, oh yes, and this is where Yuri confesses her love to me. I was so fucked up. 
by this point in the game. <laughs> and, and I was just like, when, when Yuri asked me if I, if, I don't even know why I'm talking about all this, because you can watch either my highlights or my gameplay of the game, but when Yuri asked me if I accepted her confession, I clicked yes, and my response was, fine, anything to calm you down. And then, of course, she goes and does this shit. She stabs herself to fucking death. And, okay, we're gonna be on this screen for a while. It's a whole two days where we're just sitting here catatonically and staring at Yuri's corpse. Which I didn't realize until after the fact. I was just like, oh hey, everything's turning orange. Now everything's turning blue. I like blue. That's a nice color. I have completely lost my mind. I actually watch people play this game and never realize she was corroding. Oh, like sort of decomposing? I never realized it either, actually. I never realized it because I was just like, how fucking long are we gonna be hanging on this screen with all the glitchy text? All right, it's festival time. Wow, you got here before me? Screaming. Screaming intensifies. Yeah, I would probably do the same if I wasn't expecting to see a corpse. Did something happen? Yes, something happened, Monica! I was a broken man the first time I came out of this game. And it's all your fault! And this is where Monica deletes Yuri and Natsuki, leaving only her in the game. I really just had to have one since it's the last time I ever get the chance to. You're- you can do literally anything in this game. Can't you just- somehow tamper with the code and, like, copy-paste a new cupcake? Ugh, that distortion is uncomfortable. Hello, Monica! You accursed spawn of Satan! If only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a bit less awkward. It would have! If I had paid a little more attention, I would not have been a broken man! It's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? I heard Sayori's name like 40 minutes ago because I was blowing through the game as fast as I could. And of course you deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try and make them as unlikable as possible. The irony here is that I think by doing what you did, Monica, you only got people more attached to the characters. Either because they felt bad for them because you were tampering with their shit. Or somehow they took a liking to their personalities. The way you modified them. I mean, I guess you could say I'm the latter case for Sayori. God, I still feel bad for poor Sayori, man. She doesn't even get her happy ending in the end. What kind of cruel game is this, Snake? It's a very cruel game. I was a broken man by the end of this. I wonder if I should read this in her silly voice. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be there, to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more grey. More and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life, Snake. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. As for the others, how could I miss them? Yeah, I'm just gonna delete Monica's code. Fuck you, Monica. You're gonna fucking die. How do you like them apples? What's happening? Snake, what's happening to me? It hurts. It hurts so much. Help me, Snake. Please hurry and help me. Help me! Oh, Jesus. Okay, that part scared me. That caught me a little off- Actually, even now, that part caught me a little off guard. <laughs> I did not remember- I did not remember that happening until it happened. Holy fuck. 
Yes, I did delete you. Fuck you, Monica. How could you? How could you do this to me? I... <laughs> Fuck you, Monica. You can't see it, but I'm flipping off the screen right now. Yes, thank you for understanding, Monica. Team Salvato. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. No shit. No fucking shit. Sayori is back! Yes! Yay! It's been so long since I last saw you, Sayori. If, if I could reach into the screen and give you a hug, I would, but I can't. Aw, that makes me sad. Yes! Sayori is back. And my cursor has disappeared. That's fucking great. And after this, when I clicked new game, I started to- I made the mistake. I didn't start to. I didn't start to. I made the mistake of starting to relax again. Because I thought this would be the end of it and everything would just be back to normal. Um... But... Little did I know... That, uh... We would start seeing more fucked up shit just to just as like the little sprinkles on the icing on the cake at the very end. By the way, Sayori, I had something to say to you after I got the golden ending, but you weren't there to listen. But now that I'm in the game with you, now that I'm in the game with you, I want to say, look at this, right? I'm down to spend eternity with you in a room in space because you're my favorite but please do not scare me like you did the first time I went through this scene ever again this is probably the only time you deserve this for fucking scaring me so hard when I thought everything was over and now we're going to the end credit sequence I'm just gonna sit and let this roll, and then, um... Can you hear me? And then I'll say my final thoughts. Hi. By the way, this is really impressive. Can I just say, Monica's piano playing, for someone who's only been practicing for however long you've been playing the game, is super fucking impressive. I took a semester of piano lessons, and by the end of it, I was only able to play, like, maybe a few pieces. I didn't have the technique down to play a song like this one. Honestly, if I- I mean, it- you can get here. I know you can get here with practice, but if I didn't know any better, I would have thought Monica was like, classically trained in a previous life or something. And here we are at Monica's final letter to the literature club. So, um... Yeah, that was my just quick playthrough and uh, commentary on Doki Doki Literature Club, a game that came out in 2017 and I still remember to this day in 2020. And I still, I still love Sayori with a pretty big fraction of my heart. I haven't, I haven't made any Doki Doki Literature Club content like I have with Girls Frontline and stuff like that, just because there isn't really much interesting that I can do with the game. I mean, I am I am leading a dev team that uh, was working on a mod, but um, you know that's pretty much gone under at this point. We've all like sort of had our own things to do, so um, I don't see that coming out anytime soon. But anyway, um, yeah, that's about it. I've been the Snigrox, and I will see you all later. Thank you all for watching.